Hey everyone, thanks for joining us for another episode of Zoo School. Today we are learning about one of the most amazing animals, um, and that is the anteater. So you can see Delilah here is with her keeper Kim. Hi guys! And Kim's going to teach us all about anteaters. I have a couple of questions for you before we get started though. Sounds good! Because we are learning all about zoo life in zoo school, right? So you are a zookeeper. I am. Which is awesome. So what made you decide to be a zookeeper? You know, I have always loved animals since I was a very little kid and it was, it kind of fell into my lap. I started doing pony rides and working with animals and I discovered that it was probably the happiest place I could be is working with animals. So I started out working at a couple of smaller zoos and I worked my way up to Roger Williams, which is one of my favorite places. It's super awesome here. We have a whole bunch of really cool animals and it's really fun to work here and I enjoy every minute of it. So what other um, animals do you take care of besides the lion? I take care of the giant anteaters, I take care of the primates, any of the howler monkeys, the sake monkeys, the gibbons. Um, I also get to work with a lot of the birds. Uh, the king vultures are one of my favorites. We have the toucan, we have a whole bunch of free flight birds in the aviary. Um, I even get to hang out with the sloth every once in a while, so that's super fun. But yeah, I kind of get to bounce around a little bit, so I'm lucky I'm a swing zookeeper, so I can work on the farm, I can work with the cheetahs, or usually I'm in the rainforest hanging out with these guys. Nice, nice. So uh, a lot of folks that tune in to watch zoo school are kiddos that probably want to grow up to be zookeepers. So what advice do you have for them? You know what? Any little bit you can do helps quite a bit. If you can volunteer even at your local animal shelter, if you have any classes you can take for fun at a local college or school, uh, any animal experience is awesome. And a lot of zoos nowadays require a degree. So if you want to go to college and get an animal science, biology, a lot of different areas, it doesn't have to be animal science. A lot of science degrees are also good when it comes to working with animals. So any kind of experience you can add to your resume is great. And always be enthusiastic. Don't, let, don't ever feel like you can't get there because you can get there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about Delilah? So this is Delilah. She's our mom anteater. And right now she's eating one of her favorite snacks, a nice delicious avocado. But you can't really see her lips that well because she's eating so much. But they're actually, they can only open about the width of a pencil. They can't get very wide. So most of the food that they eat has to be stuck to their tongue. So what we do is we actually feed them insectivore green, which is like a pelleted green. And it, they can stick their tongues right in it and slurp it right up. Sometimes we make them slurpees and they like that. Um, but Delilah here, she also likes to eat fruit. Sometimes we'll give her some oranges and they actually have a lot of fun because you can't see right now, but their claws are actually about four inches long. And they can use those claws to rip open the fruit. Can I see your claw? No, not today. Here, you want this? Oh, who's that? Who came to see you? Um, so they actually, in the wild, they'll use those big claws to rip open termite and ant mounds so that they can get in and get all the different food stuffs that they like to eat. So they're, they, they're not super destructive. They won't completely destroy a termite or ant mound. They'll kind of rip it up a little bit and eat what they want and save some for later. So they're pretty good at making sure they always have a snack available. But they... They can also use those claws as defense, and if they feel scared or threatened, sometimes what they'll do is they'll put their claw up in the air and give you a warning that you better watch out, I'm a little angry with you right now. So they're, they're pretty nice about uh, giving you a heads up if, they, if they're not happy. But they can also slash with those claws to protect themselves. So if they ever feel threatened, it's a really good defense mechanism. And they also will stand all the way up on their hind legs to make themselves look bigger and scarier when they need to. But if you look, she's got a nice stripe along her back right here. And that's so her baby, when her baby rides on her back, the baby can blend right into her back and you don't even know that she's sitting there. So sometimes baby will ride on mom's back. Our baby's getting a little bit big so she doesn't ride on mom's back quite as often. But the other cool thing about these guys is this big brushy tail that they have back here. And actually sometimes they'll use it as a blanket and when they lay down in their carrier or, or take a nap in the ground, they'll take their tail and they'll fold it all the way over the top of them. So they actually look like a big pile of brush 
and something can't sneak up on them and eat them while they're sleeping. It also helps keep them warm. They're pretty adapted for their environment. They're very good at hiding. They can blend in with the brush. Baby can blend in with mama. And they have nice defense mechanisms on their feet. They have the claws to protect them. And they also have their nice big long two foot long tongue that they use for eating. I don't know if mama will stick it out. Let's see. Will you, will you reach out and show everybody your tongue? Can I talk about the no teeth? These guys actually don't have any teeth in their mouth. They just have that big long tongue. If you can see it kind of flicks right back out while she's eating. But that that they don't really need to have the teeth because of the way that they of the things that they eat. Oh look, they're her nice long <laughs> claws for you guys to check out. But they don't really need teeth because they eat a lot of insects. So they don't actually have to chew them too much. And here comes baby demo. Hi baby. So now I noticed that this is all mushy food and that's yes. because she doesn't have teeth. Um, did you have to do anything special for demo? No, and um, sometimes the anteaters will just eat regular insectivore grain. These guys happen to like theirs blended with banana. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they get, they get a special uh, slurry to eat. Sounds look at like you my daughter when she was a baby. Yeah, look Hi, at you. Kiddo. Hi. Can I talk about their lower body temperature? Is that 91 degrees, Kim? Uh, I it is at 91. believe it's 91. Yeah, so these guys do have a lower body temperature, so they actually prefer the warmer temperatures. And um, we leave the heat in their barn pretty warm over the winter time so that they can stay nice and toasty. And they tend to really love this sunshiny weather so that they can come out and soak up the sun. But that's really another true. good reason to have that big tail to keep them warm. And also their sense of smell is what, nine times stronger than humans? Oh yeah, they can smell those ants. And sometimes what we do for fun for these guys is we'll take a snack, we'll take orange or something, and we can bury it under the ground. And since they have such a good sense of smell, they can come out in the yard and dig it up and find it. Because like I said before, they have those big toes and claws so they can get right into that dirt. That's awesome. That sounds like a lot of fun for you guys and for them. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> but yeah, sometimes for enrichment stuff, we'll give them different scents. Um, we have a whole barrel full of spices and uh, oils and stuff like that for them to smell. And they can come out and, and dig it up. Actually, Delilah here, she really likes lemon extract. Sometimes we'll put it on the ball and she'll like roll all in it and get all covered in some extract because she thinks it's very delicious. I'm going to steal some of this for you, baby. And we're going to see if Demo wants some. I know, you see, Demo was all the way across the yard and she happened to smell that we had an avocado way <laughs> over here and she decided to join us because she smelled it. She knew it was ready. So her name, Demo, is a combination of her parents, It right? is, yep. So Delilah and Mo Killa, which is backpack, <laughs> um, they actually, we thought it would be cute if she had Demo as a name. It's the combination of the two, but also, Anteaters can be like little demolition derby critters and rip a whole bunch of stuff up. So we thought it was fun. And I don't know if you've ever seen a dog that gets all riled up and their, their fur goes up on their back. If you can see, Demo's a little puffy right here because she's not used to having all these people hanging out with her. <laughs> well, you are a very brave girl, Demo, and I promise we are your friends. Yeah, she's a good girl. Mm -hmm. She likes having new adventures. I can see that. I think a lot of our viewers like to have new adventures too. Oh yeah. So we're going to talk about the Zoo School Challenge in a minute, but um, what will be a nice segue into that is um, something that I noticed, our viewers probably noticed too. So they're called ant eaters. And yeah, they are. while Miss Delilah's eating, eating her avocado, I saw a couple ants walk by and I got a little worried for the ants, <laughs> but she didn't seem to you know, uh, care about them. You know, sometimes right these guys will eat some ants. I've seen them eat a couple of bugs wandering around the exhibit <laughs> sometimes, but since they're here at the zoo and we give them a completely balanced diet, they don't really feel that they have to go and hunt and find all those little ants because in the wild, they eat over 10,000 ants a day. So, here in the zoo, it would be kind of hard to pick out 10,000 ants yes. for an anteater. <laughs> so we give them their grain and their snacks instead, and it seems to work out great, and they really love their food here. Nice. And another thing I noticed, because I work at the zoo, and I work with a lot of different animals, 
most animals cannot eat avocado, right? It's that toxic is true. For a lot of it animals. is toxic for a lot of animals. And we also don't want to overdo it with these guys, so we do limit the amount that they eat during the day, but the anteaters are built to be able to digest the avocado, so it is not toxic to them. And I don't know if you've ever seen our other little anteater family creature, Tamandua. Mm -hmm. Frankie, he also gets avocado and really enjoys avocado, but since he's smaller, he gets a smaller piece. Nice, nice, nice. But at home, you shouldn't give avocado to your pets. You should not give avocado to your pets. These guys are pretty special and they can digest it, but you don't want your puppies eating any of that or your cats. So it's always good to make sure first before you feed them a new snack, if it's okay. Nice. Also, ant eaters have a very low calorie diet. So that would compensate yep. for the body temperature as well as the food they eat. They don't have to expend so much energy. <laughs> Me. Oh, they're sharing. Sharing Aww. is caring. It is baby <laughs> week here at the zoo, oh, so we yeah. got a nice shot of Mama and Baby sharing a snack. Aww. I used to share snacks with my babies. I still do sometimes. Yep. They're not babies anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Did you all see how Delilah loved to eat those bugs? A lot of animals love to eat bugs. And today, Kim is gonna explain how that relates to your zoo school challenge. All right, guys, so we know that there's lots of bugs out in our environment. And scientists every day are out there exploring and seeing what's out there for other animals to eat. So, we like to call that bio blitz when the scientists go out and they find all kinds of neat stuff out there. So we want you guys to have your own bio blitz in your backyard. So what you guys should do is you should go out and explore your yard and everybody come back and tell us what kind of bugs you found in there and maybe what kind of animals you think would eat those bugs. Maybe even make a recipe for an anteater lunch. That sounds awesome. Thanks so much for joining us today and we'll see you next time.